The use of gas as a weapon was first used in the First World War. Though France was the first to employ gas in war, Germany was the first country to use poisonous gas. Gas was employed by all major powers. The Allies, comprised mainly of Britain, France, Russia, and Italy, and the central powers of Germany, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, and the Ottoman Empire. The first use of gas was in August of 1914 when the French sent tear gas toward German trenches in hopes to slow down a seemingly unstoppable force. We asked Dr. William O'Brien Sr. to help better explain the effect of these gases. Tear gases are the least severe of the chemical agents and work through irritation of mucous membranes within the eyes, throat, and lungs. This irritation leads to excessive tear formation, coughing, and difficulty with both vision and breathing. The effects are self-limited or temporary and typically resolve shortly after the exposure without any permanent injury. This gave the Germans the OK to use gas in war as they were already putting thought into it. Later that year on October 14, 1914, the Germans fired gas shells at the French, filled with gas that would cause sneezing fits. Gases to incapacitate and destroy enemy morale didn't come into mind until the trench warfare became stagnant. To put an end to the standstill and cause the enemy to retreat, the Germans used the first poisonous gas at the Second Battle of Ypres in April 1915. The chemical gas used at the Second Battle of Ypres was chlorine, a powerful irritant that caused damage to the respiratory tract, and death in large concentration. We go back to Dr. William O'Brien Sr. to describe the effects of chlorine gas. The short and long-term effects of chlorine gas depend primarily upon the amount of gas inhaled and may be fatal when severe. Chlorine gas reacts with water vapors in the lungs, forming hydrochloric acid, which damages the alveoli, which is where gas exchange and oxygenation of blood occurs within the lungs. This alveolar damage leads to asphyxia due to decreased oxygenation of blood, as well as pulmonary edema, which may be fatal when severe. Searching for a more effective gas, Germany created mustard gas in July 1917. This came to be the most effective gas of the First World War. Though not great to cause fatalities on the battlefield, it was great to disable infantry and pollute the battlefield for weeks at a time. To explain the effects of mustard gas, here's Dr. William O'Brien Sr. Mustard gas is a very powerful blistering agent that damages the skin as well as the mucous membranes of the eyes and respiratory tract. However, unlike tear gas and chlorine gas, the effects of mustard gases are typically delayed, presenting roughly 24 hours after the initial exposure. At times, individuals may not even know they were exposed until the characteristic symptoms begin to appear. Involved areas first become red and itchy, followed by blister formation as a result of cell death. The blisters are often painful and debilitating, and in some cases they may even be disfiguring. When severe, the exposure may result in death. Mustard gas oftentimes took four to five weeks to kill. The sight of the pain and suffering that infantrymen endured caused loss of morale on all fronts. This gas was especially useful on the Eastern Front as the Russians were poorly prepared. On the Western Front, the German use of mustard gas became less effective as time went on due to weather condition and increasingly effective gas masks. Since the introduction of gas in the First World War was unexpected, the soldiers were unprepared for them. Even at the Second Battle of Ypres, Germany was still unsure of chlorine gas's effects and thus only gave breathing masks to the engineers. On the Allies' side, a Canadian medical officer identified the gas as chlorine and suggested troops urinate on cloth and hold it over their mouths. Soon after, a gas helmet was introduced. This was a rather crude way of neutralizing gas as it was prone to rain and goggles fogged rather quickly. The next advancement was a two-way respirator called a large box respirator. This was a mouthpiece placed over the head and connected to a box worn by the user. Due to the box being too bulky, it was replaced by the small box respirator. The small box respirator featured a close-fitting rubber mask with eyepieces. The box filter was significantly smaller and could be worn around the neck. For mustard gas, no effective countermeasures were found. This was due to the fact that contact with skin could cause severe damage. Germany's use of mustard gas caused the death of over 56,000 Russians. The Russian casualties made up the majority of gas casualties, many of their soldiers and even civilians were killed by gas. Russia had a total of 419,340 casualties. 
Germany and the Central Powers suffered approximately 300,000 casualties. The Allies on the Western Front had a total of 480,000 casualties. An estimate of nearly 100,000 to 260,000 civilian casualties were caused by gas. The main cause of civilian casualties was strong wind blowing gas to nearby towns. Tens of thousands died after the war ended due to damage left by gas. The First World War was a very tragic one. It not only took the lives of over 37 million people, but also added chemical weapons to war. In the end, not much was won, but all sides had losses. Thank you for watching. We would like to thank Dr. William O'Brien Sr. for helping us with this interview. Mr. Josh Bennett for helping us with lessons. Please stay tuned for an exclusive reenactment by Matt and Todd.